But the big news, well, apart from the cricket, which we're going to mention later too, the big news yesterday was the uh, sacking, and that's what it's called, sacking um, of Rob Campbell, the head of, well, it's called Te Fata Ora. Let's just call it um, the health agency, the government's new reformed national health agency. So he was the top health bureaucrat in the country. Rob Campbell, he's in his 70s, former trade unionist, national leader of trade union movements, uh, businessman, um, wokester, quite clearly, to be honest, uh, Rob Campbell. Rob Campbell came out and he bagged the National Party's Three Waters policy. He bagged Chris Luxon. But the problem is he's a public servant and there is a very, very clear and for very good reasons delineation between what public servants can say in public uh, and keeping their jobs. And he broke it and he still seems defiantly to break it. He's lawyered up. Um, and he's saying the Prime Minister's got it wrong and he's right and the treaty's really important and I kind of admire a guy who goes down in flames without regret. Good on you, uh, Rob Campbell. I know you personally. I know you're that sort of person. Should never have had the job in the first place. But how has the right thing happened here? And how important is this principle of political neutrality, or at least the appearance of it, from our public servants? Um I think very important, and in just a moment when we get him on, uh, we're going to discuss um, with David Seymour uh, uh, about that. Could I also add, though, you need to know that Rob Campbell is sucking at the taxpayer tit in another job. He is the chair. He is the chair of the Environmental Protection Authority, a supposedly politically neutral standalone authority that looks at the environment. And David Parker is the minister responsible there. And as far as we know, he's still got that job. So discuss all the downstream from this. Uh, we are joined now by the ACT leader, David Seymour. David, nice to have you back on the platform. Good morning to you. Hey, good morning, Sean. Can you believe the defiance of Rob Campbell this morning? I've lawyered up the Prime Minister's wrong. Um, he is not going quietly, is, it, is he, into the night? Well, I hope he's got some good lawyers because um, this Crown Entities Act, Section 36, says that the minister can fire him at her discretion for any reason whatsoever. Um, so far be it from me to give legal advice, but uh, just as a layperson, it looks pretty hard to get around that one. I think the real issue is um, you've got a guy who lacks a bit of maturity and he thinks that he's bigger than the system. And when you have people like that, you've got a real problem. I mean, just to be clear, this is about two things. It's about democracy and it's about health. Uh, New Zealanders need a public service that will serve whatever government they elect. Um, if you have uh, a public service that says we, we'll only work for one side or the other and the people say, no, no, we'd like to vote for a different government, uh, then actually you're not going to get that government supported and the people's choice isn't real. So this guy seems to think he's bigger than democracy and the will of the people. Uh, and then there's the issue of health care, that you've got waiting lists longer than uh, New Zealand, uh, and yet um, this guy spends most of his time apparently on social media. So, you know, the, the, you've got a guy who's, who's had some sort of a breakdown or whatever, um, and I just hope that... Uh, hang on, are you that, suggesting he might be mentally unwell? No, no, I'm not suggesting... Well, you just he's said I, he's had well, some sort of breakdown. That implies that you think he's mentally unwell or unstable. Oh, look, some, no, it doesn't. It's some sort of breakdown, I said. And, you know, he's somebody who, for whatever reason, has got his priorities out of whack or he's at a stage of life or who knows. But yeah, He's still that, chair of the Environmental right. Protection Agency, David. He's yeah, that's right. And I just asked the question, if it's not good enough for Aisha Verrill as Minister of Health... How is his behaviour good enough for David Parker as the Minister for the Environment? Now, David Parker, as Minister for the Environment, appointed him to the EPA. Um, is there some suspicion that somehow uh, David Parker is weaker than Aisha Verrill? Or is uh, environmental protection less of a priority for this government than health? I wouldn't have thought so, but I think David Parker is going to have to explain that today. Yeah. Uh, Rob Campbell has said that these comments were made on LinkedIn which is social media, whether you like it or not, um, in a private capacity. Just to be clear, 
Can public servants of that seniority make any <coughs> comments on uh, on social media? And does LinkedIn profile list him as the head of uh, of the health agency? Can he expect? I mean, is that in any way justified as an excuse? Well, that, that was going to be my first question: is does his LinkedIn profile <coughs> list him as the head of the? Yeah, it does um, or did? The Vata War. So, so there's your answer. Uh, the second issue, I, I think it's a really interesting question. And the way I'd put it is like this, because I'm, I'm in favour of free speech. Yeah. Um, but, of course, the, the question is, well, why is this wrong? Uh, if he's just exercising free speech, well, I put it this way. Um, if you were being tried in front of a judge, and that judge had been, you know, slagging off Sean and slagging off the platform, uh, your lawyer wouldn't be doing their job if they didn't ask for a different judge, uh, because yeah. that was obviously biased. And that's why judges, for very good reason, uh, don't have public opinions. They, they keep their private opinions very much to themselves. Uh, and if they didn't, our whole judicial system would fall apart. Mm. On the other hand, you can imagine another healthcare worker, say a nurse, um, who loves Jacinda and doesn't really like Chris Luxon and, um, you know, decides to start slagging people off online. Um, now, you know, in, in that case, should a nurse be sacked for expressing a private opinion on Facebook? Um, I would say no because the implications of it aren't really here nor there. But, but uh, the encouragement for her to do that, or a middle manager to do that, if there had been no consequences to Rob Campbell, if you like, the whole chain of responsibility starts to erode, doesn't it? Well, that, <coughs> well, that, that's right. So, I mean, that, that guy who's a nurse, whatever. Um, but what about second-tier uh, public servants, you know, your deputy secretaries, as they call them in Wellington, uh, do they get licensed to start saying, you know what, uh, the people of New Zealand just elected Brooke Van Velden, uh, an ACT MP as Minister of Health. Uh, they've got a set of policy priorities they want her to carry out. But you know what, uh, we don't have to do that because we're Te Whata Ora and our chair uh, has already told the world right. that we don't agree with these guys' policies. So that's why I think, you know, while I support free speech, Rob Campbell signed up to a code of conduct. That was his job. If he didn't read his job description, then he's been fired for incompetence rather than saying stupid things. Yeah. Look, I was thinking of another example of someone clearly from a political background doing the right thing, uh, David, in the, in the public service. And Simon Power, head of Television New Zealand, dealing in a very controversial portfolio, but since his appointment there, and he came actually from a time in the, in the private sector, he has, in what is a powder keg of a job, not put a foot wrong in terms of his, his social media comments or, or anything else. He's stuck by the code. Well, exactly. And I mean, you can just imagine, I mean, I, I suspect, I, I don't know Simon Power that well, but I've met him a few times and I just suspect that uh, his personal views um, are that the RNZ TV and Z merger is the stupidest thing anyone's ever asked him to be involved in. But he never uh, but commented as, on it. As, as, you, as you say, he's been 100% professional. And actually, it's not just him. It's most of, if nearly all, of New Zealand's public service. We've got a proud tradition of a politically neutral public service. We don't have what they have in Washington in the United States, where every time a new president is elected, they have to basically fire everybody because they don't trust them and then restart hiring new people and four years later... Well, hang on, this is a little different than what you've been saying in the last couple of days. You were suggesting that there's a whole lot more politically partisan bureaucrats in Wellington than we know, and we might need to have some sort of pogrom to get rid of them. Well, certainly what I, what I said two days ago is that uh, if this government doesn't get rid of Rob Campbell, then that's where we're going to end up. Uh, we're going to end up in a situation where the public service uh, is emboldened and politicised to the point that public service reform will be necessary. You know, I'm still concerned, and having worked on charter schools, for example, um, the opposition that we fa faced from within the Ministry of Education back then uh, was severe. So there are pockets of it 
but I have to say that by and large, I think we can be proud of our public service, and we, or at least the traditions of them, and we should be trying to cultivate that uh, rather than descending into an American-style system. So, look, there's, there's a bit of both. I mean, there certainly are people in there that need to go, I've got to assure you, um, but I still want to uphold the Kiwi tradition of a, public, a politically neutral public service. All right. Just I want to move on to one other issue that we've talked about previously, but just on... On, on Campbell, he, he seems defiant. He doesn't want to be wrong. Has he got to go from the EPA today? Should we hear that this morning? Well, at the very least, uh, David Parker needs to explain why he wouldn't go. I would say he needs to go. But if David Parker's got a good reason why, you know, this is somehow different, maybe he's got different standards from Oshaviral, maybe environment's yeah. not as big a priority as health, who knows? But love to hear David Parker explain yeah. why he's been fired from health, but he's good to go for environment. Also, does David this suggest that there is a change in Labor, that they are prepared to act ethically and honestly, and they move pretty quickly when it was clear that Campbell wouldn't move? Is this another indication of the brave new leadership of Chris Hipkins? Well, for New Zealand's sake, I certainly hope so. In the past, uh, you know, David uh, Clark was the Minister of Health, went mountain biking in the middle of his own lockdown instead of being at the Beehive working on it. Yeah. And he, the only reason he eventually got fired was for offending Ashley Bloomfield, St Ashley. Uh, you know, we've had a long history of Ardern uh, she really showed us the dangerous side of kindness because she couldn't sack anyone no matter what the consequence. I hope this is a change, but um, I have to say, overall, you've still got all the same people uh, except for Jacinda Ardern, so is that really a different team? I'm not so sure. All right, look, I want to move on to another issue we talked about, the amazing Tusiata Avia poem, Savage Coloniser, which is going to be performed as a stage experience at the Auckland Festival of the Arts, she herself and the festival largely funded through public money, uh, through trusts that are set up and administered by the government. We understand, as of yesterday, more than 50 complaints lodged with the Human Rights Commission about this. They are now in the middle of launching what they call, I think, a coordinated or consolidated response to those complaints. Um, are you glad to see that a piece like that, which I think almost universally has been condemned as inciting violence, even though it's art, even though it's free speech, are you encouraged to see the Human Rights Commission and the Race Relations Commission or at least taking it seriously? Well, not really, because, I mean, the Race Relations Commissioner will mouth off at the drop of a hat. He doesn't even need a good reason, and often he gets things wrong. For example, when he attacked Auckland Grammar for a, a kid's play... Yeah, uh, and he had all the facts wrong in that instance. Um, what I've found is that he has to be dragged, kicking and screaming and will often justify racism if it is racism that he agrees with. For example, just this week I got a letter back from him where he said that, um, what's his name, uh, Rarui Waititi... Oh, yeah, yeah, Maori which is the same issue that Captain Cook hate, yep. Yep, yep, so I complained to him about that um, and he said, oh, no, it's justified because other people think it and they've thought it a long time and there's lots of hurt from Oh, there are other Nazis, so it's all right. <laughs> that, that is more or less a summary of Meng Foon's letter to me yesterday. Um, you know, on this, he should have been out straight away, but he's only going to do it if dragged kicking and screaming uh, to resist. When the Maori Party said that Maori are genetically superior to other races um, on their website, I wrote to him, he refused to make a public statement. I wrote to him again, he refused to make a public statement. Eventually he said, I'll talk to them quietly. Well, he uh, did so, come on this program yeah. and say he'd do something about that, which he then didn't, yeah. Yeah, so he's a, he's a gutless wonder, and that's why the Human Rights Commission needs to go. The real issue with this play is that Having looked at some of the legal precedent around incitement, uh, you know, as I said at the start of the program, I, I'm no lawyer, I'm just a humble yeah. electrical engineer, but it would appear to me that it meets the test for incitement and perhaps the police should be looking at it. And I'd just ask uh, Ms. Sevilla, you know, what will you do if a group of people hear your play and she's performing it to school kids 
Uh, and they actually do decide that white people are descendants of Captain Cook and white people could be rapists or murderers and that it is justified to go out with a pig knife and stab people. What will she do if her poem leads to that? Because in any other circumstance, somebody saying things like that would be done for incitement, uh, they would be guilty and they would feel bad for themselves. Does she feel that way? Yeah. I'm asking her not to continue with this play. Okay, to could I add it the publicity shot? Yeah. Have you seen the publicity to, shot for, for, the, for the festival? I haven't. I, I may have seen it in my search. It's got her holding a machete. Well, I mean, there's, there, there you go. I, I, I haven't seen that. I'd remember if I had. Um, but, look, I mean, here's the other thing. The, 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 the Human Rights Commission says give nothing to racism. Well, you as a taxpayer have collectively given $107,000 in the form of a Creative New Zealand grant uh, to this performance. So, you know, this is just absolutely outrageous. It's one thing to support free speech. It's another thing to support incitement. And it's another thing altogether to have taxes taken and given by the government uh, to actually support incitement. And that's why under a change of government, this Creative New Zealand board uh, might find themselves an endangered species. All right, David, one other last thing, a story we covered here yesterday in the same milieu, a story in, uh, published by Stuff over the weekend claiming there was a controversy in a de debate over a strange sort of Greek pagoda in the Basin Reserve, which is a memorial to William Wakefield um, and a well, non-elected Māori Ward councillor from Wellington who we had on the programme yesterday, um, Terry O'Neill, a Green councillor from Wellington and some academics said that this guy, William Wakefield, who was one of the brothers who founded the uh, New Zealand company, had basically kidnapped a 14-year-old heiress 200 years ago in Scotland so sh she could marry his brother and that he was a terrible, terrible man, and his memorial in the Basin Reserve, which is a nice um, shady spot to have a beer during a test match, um, should be pulled down. Now, I got the oh. I got the Māori ward councillor on yesterday, and he said it should be pulled down because he was a bad man and we don't need to memorialise bad men. And I asked him whether they would then, Pori Rua should therefore remain, rename to Rapraha Arena. Because, of course, he was a really bad man on any scale of bad dudes. Tarapraha is right up there. He ate people, he murdered people, he committed sort of tribal genocide. Um, and he said, no, that was different. I had the con oh, cultural context was... wrong. Yeah. Oh. Um, okay. Uh, <laughs> well, look, I, I, just, I just look out there and I say... Um, you know, you've got inflation out of control, the floods are going to make it worse, you've got crime, particularly in Hawke's Bay and the, and the, and the East Cape where, uh, you know, the, the government refuses to listen to victims, which is very not them, and you've got 100,000 kids not going to school and the government's answer is to have 82 uh, truancy officers out looking for 100,000 kids who are chronically truant. Um, I think if we start worrying about the costs of living, crime, getting kids to school and a national identity that's actually inclusive for a change, um, then maybe we won't spend so much time worrying about William Wakefield's pagoda uh, at the Basin Reserve and the nature of um, marriage and, 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 and the age of marriage of people in Scotland 200 years ago, which, while maybe interesting, is not the most urgent problem New Zealand faces. All right. If you had uh, a word of advice for Rob Campbell today, what would it be? Uh, pull your head in. Uh, you're not bigger than the whole system. Uh, you're just another person entitled to one five millionth of the opportunity this country has to offer. It's a lot of work to be done. Um, maybe spend less time on LinkedIn and more time helping other people. Good on you, David. I thank you very much indeed for joining us this morning. David Seymour, leader of the ACT Party. Oh, uh, maybe, maybe the message to you, Rob Campbell, is pull your head in. Now is not the time. Cut it out. Cut it out. Um, he needs a jolly good telling off, and he's got it. But Rob's the sort of guy, if you want to go down in, a, in flames, that's fine. You've called in the lawyers. The minister can sack you at her. Ple you serve at the minister's pleasure, Rob. And we've invited Rob to come on the programme, but we're not woke enough for him. Um, so he won't, the old chicken. Um, it's amazing. All the other media are now deeply into covering the poem story. Ah, you know, 
saying? It's nice to leave the pack. Look, I've got Ben here. We've got a few minutes. So, Ben, what have we... Because we were, we decided, didn't we, we'd go and talk to Human Rights or Ming Foon because the reaction to that poem had been so universally negative, right? We did. We went to Ming Foon. Um, I was interested in his take or whether he'd come on to discuss things. And his response to me was that the matter was currently before a legal process to do with the Human Rights Commission um, and was therefore just due to say. So... Um, I, f I thought that was interesting. I went to the Human Rights Commission to ask about that, um, and they said that they were, or at least my source there said they were currently reviewing. Um, uh, the number initially was 49 individual complaints to do with the poem. Um, that number was later updated to 55, which is where it's at currently. I haven't heard anything more this morning, but we'll keep chasing that up. Um, and so the, the, the matter at the moment is reviewing these individual complaints before making any public judgment on them. And he said that he imagines, um, especially if there are more complaints, that there will be what he called a consolidated response. A consolidated, a consolidated respo response under the Human Rights Act. Um, wow. So that's serious now. It's, yeah, it's looking do that we, way. Do we have any idea if 55 complaints about one thing is a big deal or, or is disproportionate? Um, well, I mean, he didn't seem to think it was overly uh, significant. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, I think the, 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 the tone was that these complaints are pouring in now and that the number will update. So I'll keep chasing that up this afternoon and see if we can get a more updated number. Good on you. It's funny, though, isn't it? Because Ming Foon will jump into print and condemn stuff without complaints if it's white on black, as it were. And he doesn't, well, we've got to go through due process on this one. That seems strange. To that, me. That does seem slightly strange. But, um, yeah, so 55 at the moment. Um, I don't actually have any... I need to ask perhaps about the nature of these complaints yeah. um, and, and when they started getting that, that wave, I suppose, yes. that increase in complaints. Yeah. Well, and it, what the response will actually be because... Yeah, well, you know, well I like imagine the responsible is she, she either gets charged or, or the palm is withdrawn from publication. Yeah, things like that. And this, uh, is designated as a harmful publication and a racist publication. And then Auckland Arts Festival would have to pull its head in and cut it and out. cut it out. Yeah, yeah. Good on you, Ben. Good bloody work, mate. Uh, great.